uh, Thursday to Sunday, we just blew all of the post-pandemic records. Seven million people came to our theaters between Thursday and Sunday, mostly to watch the new Spider-Man No Way Home movie. These were records. We set a new record Thursday, a new record again on Friday, a new record again on Saturday. Uh, just to put 7 million guests in a weekend in perspective, we didn't do 7 million tickets in the entire first quarter of 2021. And that tells me that movie, th movie going at cinemas is back. Now, Adam, uh, you know, one thing is uh, certain. You have survived incredibly well. Can you tell me what your competitors are doing right here? Well, look, my job is not to run my competitors. It's to run AMC. And what we did, uh, starting in April of 2020, when the pandemic forced us to close all 1,000 of our theaters worldwide in a week, and we lost 99.9% of our revenues in a week, uh, we started raising money. And between equity that we raised and debt that we raised and concessions that we got from our lenders and our landlords and even our employees sacrificed, I furloughed myself back in 2020. Uh, AMC raised more than $5 billion. Uh, and it was the raising of that cash that put us in a position to weather this horrible pandemic. We did end the second quarter of this year with $2 billion of cash. That's the biggest war chest that AMC has ever had in our 101-year history. Now, I, I don't want to uh, leave some of our more critical viewers uh, hanging. It is true that you and your family have sold a great deal of stock at higher levels. Uh, but also, I think that you made that very clear that you would do that. Can you just go over what you did uh, and what else you have? Sure, I'm, I'm happy to, because I think I've been more transparent with the market on this subject than just about any human being alive. Uh, when I haven't sold an AMC share in the six years that I've run the company, uh, even though it's more than 60% of my annual compensation, I did say back in August, when I didn't have to legally, that I was approaching my 67th birthday, I hate to admit it, but it's true, uh, in September. Uh, and prudent estate planning means I need to diversify my assets a little bit. But I gave the market months and months of notice. I told people I was going to be selling some stock at the end of the year. I put it in a 10 v 5 one plan, which means that all the trading decisions were taken out of my hands. I said I would spread the sales over several months so no one could accuse me of gaming the market. I actually sold some shares at prices below where it's trading right now this morning. But look, the important thing is uh, when this is all done, I'm still going to own or have been granted uh, more than 2 million AMC shares. I have an enormous stake in this company's future. I am very committed to lead this company. I'm very committed to its future. And I actually think that future is quite bright. Yeah, all right. Well, tell me why you believe it's quite bright, uh, Adam, because, you know, there are plenty who believe you've done a great job stewarding this company through an unprecedented period and to, and, and to your point, have raised sufficient funds to be able to navigate through it. But they still wonder about how profitable this company can ever be, given your debt load, given how many shares additionally you have outstanding at this point as well, on a per share basis, certainly, and just you know, what seems to be, at least broadly speaking, uh, an unwillingness of some people to go to the movies in a regular way, pandemic or no? Well, David, look, those are all very good questions. But on this unwillingness to go to the movies, 7 million people went this weekend. Uh, and it was a record for us. And it was a record on Thursday. It was a record on Friday again. We broke the Thursday record. On Saturday, we broke the Friday record. It turns out Spider-Man No Way Home has the third biggest opening weekend in the history of cinema, they're going to theaters. Now, what we need for AMC to come back as the AMC that we all knew pre-pandemic, we need two things. Number one, we need to get through the pandemic. Uh, and we are making good progress. 70% of the U.S. population has had at least one vaccination so far. Uh, beyond that, though, we need new movies to be released. And what this weekend proves is that when Hollywood gives us good movies, we fill our theaters. Right. And what we haven't had since March of 2020 is a lot of movies. But in this October, 
When four different movies led the way in October, we had very strong attendance. In December, when there are lots of new movies out, we're doing fine. When mm -hmm. we look at the movies that are coming in 2022, we think that the industry-wide box office in 2022 will double the industry box office office of 2021. Now, look, nobody knows for sure. No one has a perfect crystal ball. But there sure are a lot of big movies coming out. That's one reason why I'm bullish. The second reason why I'm bullish, and here's the mistake that I think a lot of analysts are making. They're just looking at what AMC was as a company pre-pandemic and assuming the best thing that we can do is bring that company back. Uh, we're going to do much more of that than that at AMC. We intend to transform our company. We intend to do more than just bring back the old AMC. Right. So we've already announced, for example, dabbling with cryptocurrency. We've already re announced our participation with three NFTs, which I think will have a distribution of about 700,000 or so NFTs. We've announced we're going into the $6 billion home popcorn market. And those are just some of the ideas that we have. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.